Anyway, uh, I did want to move over here to the Comfrey. I've noticed when we walk around the orchard that um, it looks like they're doing the same thing. The Comfrey is something I wouldn't want to be not have in my garden or near my home because I just use it so much for so many things. And there's a different kinds of comfrey, but some will, it's worth checking into before you get one or you get a start from somebody because some comfries can reseed themselves and then some don't. This looks like exactly like ours, I'm guessing, here's Josh. Do you ever notice this coming up where you think it didn't come up from the root, Josh? No, I saw it from root divisions, this one. Yeah. I guess it's Russian comfrey. I yeah, that's what I think, it. yeah. So some can actually literally reseed and they can be once you get the comfrey started it's really hard to decide you want to move it because they can have six foot long tap roots so that's one of their um, great qualities because they're bringing up nutrients deep in the subsoil and bringing that up and but when you dig it up you inevitably are going to leave some of the tap root and it, a comfrey plant could grow from one inch of a tap root so I might say, well, I don't really want this here. I want to put that in the middle of my garden. Or maybe you have it more than likely. You have it in the middle of your garden, and you've been digging the root. And every time you dig the root, another new plant comes from every one that got broken off. So you think, I'm going to move that out of that garden and move it over here. It's going to just keep coming up. But I have actually a little garden where that's happened. It was the first plant we ever brought to our property. And Josh has been to our property, but we have a lot of comfrey now. We've moved it from there, but it just, it's hard to to really get rid of that plant, but I just try to keep cutting it low because it's not in the spot where I can Anyway, it's a great plant. It's very healing. Um, it can be used as an expectorant. Um, it's high in calcium. That's partly why I brought it up because we're going to talk about using it in a plant extract, fermented plant extract because it's got a lot of calcium in it. And um, But what I mostly use this plant for is for topical reasons. I love it for poultices, um, for sprains, torn ligaments, um, even broken bones, some people call it bone, uh, bone knit, so when people, I've had somebody break their wrists, we just wrap them with, but it is good to know, like, um, this time of year, I just recently <laughs> made a mistake. Usually when I make a tea, I would make a tea, strong tea of this with just a little bit of water, and then either chop that up or just put it on almost like a plaster for that idea of healing ligaments or bones or whatever. But I, I thought, oh, well, this is such a nice time of year to harvest it. Um, I had um, a client just, I just said, pour hot water over it just for a little bit, just a little bit of water, get it softened up, and then you can just use it and wrap it around you, which seemed like a great idea. And for me, I don't think it would have been a problem at all, but she had really sensitive skin. So she told me, my knee feels so much better. I want to keep doing it, but what could give me a rest? And I, I truly don't believe she's allergic to the comfrey. It's just because it's a bit hairy and it's a little, you know, that, that needed to be a little bit uh, steeped a little longer, even chopped up and just put on. You could even add a little oil to it and chop that up. But what if you just, just chew it? You could chew it and put it on. Yeah, that's what I do. Like if I'm out in the field, actually, when I was harvesting plants for today to take my yoga class, I abused them. I'm done stung for a while. But yeah, so you can just chew it up and use it as a poultice. And plantain is one thing that I do that with a lot. Mm -hmm. And it's a great thing to teach kids to do because then it's kind of insulting to get stung, you know, when you're out in nature as a kid especially. But then if you can teach the child, oh, well, don't worry, our remedy's right to you. Just do that. And chewing gets their, if they do it, <laughs> gets their mind off of it. The juice is really good. You can use plantain as a cleansing herb and... So that's a good thing. But yeah, you could chew the comfrey too, but that might be a lot of work if you're trying to put a big plaster on your knee. <laughs> so Everybody mostly you just want to... See in the plantain or every step? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It is very resilient. It is. And it is um, um, also called white men's footsteps. It was native <laughs> to the area and it was brought here for food and medicine, mostly for medicine, but it's a really good astringent herb, so I like to use it either, you can use it straight for like a bug bite or something like that, or put it, we'll talk about making liniment, you can make a liniment like in witch hazel or apple cider vinegar or something like that with the plantain.